So there's a lot of talking points around this Dominic Cummings story. That is to say, the Prime Minister's leading advisor um, has been accused of breaking the government's own regulations by travelling hundreds of miles from London to County Durham to um, visit relatives whilst knowing they had COVID symptoms. Now, just a disclaimer, there is some differing information going around or some of the precise details of the story are not that clear. They seem to be contradictory or at least um, not entirely clear. But one thing that seems to be consistent and every source seems to indicate this is that he did make this journey. Don't see anyone, including Dominic Cummings himself, denying that. And to me, that really is the main point. Um, I am very much of the opinion that this is plain double standards. Now, I've called into LPC and waiting for their call back, whether it'll get a slot or not, I don't know, hopefully, but, you know, it's always busy at daytime. And this one's generating a lot of public interest. If I get into the slot that's on the Ian Payne show, I'll, I'll make the sort of points I'm making in this video. But basically, um, here's the thing. Let's say, even if it did happen two months ago, technically before the March 23rd lockdown, as some people have alluded to, I don't know what precise date, this was supposed to have happened. Apparently a man saw him up here and reported it to the police. Um, even if it was before March the 23rd, it would have been a time when the virus was growing and when Dominic Cummings, as someone very, very central to the core of the Johnson government, would have been drawing up the plans for the regulations. You can be absolutely sure that anything happens in this government, Cummings will have a say on it. So he would have been one of the architects of the regulations that the rest of us um, are obliged to abide by. And what I find quite exasperating is the number of people, I mean, the pendulum is more critical of Cummings, but there are also quite a few people making excuses for him. They're saying, oh, the man was uh, looking out for his child because apparently he brought uh, his child on this journey. But here's the thing, um, the regulations clearly say that if you have symptoms of the virus, you are supposed to self-isolate where you are. It doesn't say you can travel hundreds of miles to do that. By traveling hundreds of miles with known symptoms, he is potentially affecting a lot of other people. On that journey, you would stop at a service station, right? Especially if you have a child. So that's potentially affecting the people at the service station who then go home to their families. You know, you see how this multiplies. Um, County Durham apparently has 1,700 cases. Um, but I can't recall if that was cases or actually deaths. Could even be deaths. So how do we know how many of those may have actually come from Hummings as the person who brought it to this region? Potentially. I'm not saying he did. I'm saying it's a potential. These are all valid questions. And, you know, I've seen a few people make this pathetic what about race sort of argument and say, oh, well, what about Stephen Kinnock? Well, Stephen Kinnock got a lot of heat as well. But he doesn't have the power that Dominic Cummings has. Dr. Catherine Calderwood, Scotland's chief medical advisor, um, she had to apologise and actually resign. So this idea that Dominic Cummings is being picked on is nonsense because others have been caught out and have also received heat for it. I mean, Dr. Calderwood, and um, there was another advisor recently, um, was it uh, Dr. Ferguson? I forget the man's name, but yeah, it, I just don't buy this idea that somehow Dominic Cummings is being picked on. I think there are some Tories and some Brexit supporters. I mean, you can't avoid the politics of this because Cummings is one of the main architects of Brexit, so he's loved by Brexiteers. And I think they're just putting up blinders to that fact. They figure, oh, well, this must be the lefty media picking on Cummings because of his Brexit position. No, it's picking, it's not even picking on Cummings. It's focusing on this because he is a central figure of this government. I mean, this is the man who forced the resignation of a chancellor because he made demands that the chancellor choose his, his staff rather than his own staff where the Chancellor has always been as the second most powerful um, position in government. 
So that shows the sort of influence and power that Dominic Cummings has. People used to say Alistair Campbell had it in their government or Peter Mandelson. I think Cummings has taken um, non-elected power to a new level. Um, and how did, has he responded to this? When journalists descended on his doorstep, um, and I'll make a point about that afterwards, but, you know, he just showed arrogance. He said, oh, well, I uh, done what was within the regulations. I behave reasonably. Clearly he didn't. And even if it was technically before the regulations were brought in, that would have been a time when he was drafting them or having a say in them. So whatever way you gloss it over, it reeks of exceptionalism. Whatever way you gloss it over, I'm sure his personal circumstances were stressful. Okay? But so a lot of people are in a similar position. A lot of people have sick family members or family members with the symptoms, but they haven't broken the regulation. Or if they have, they've been subject to a police fine. I mean, I live in the northeast of England. My parents are in southwest Scotland. It's a distance of about, I think it's over 130 miles. Now, my father isn't particularly healthy, not COVID, but he's not particularly healthy. If I went to visit him, you know, if his situation deteriorated, I could still be subject to a fine. So there's a lot of people making sacrifices across the country. And those who are excusing Cummings are just missing the point. They're saying this is a non-story. Really? Someone who has symptoms of a virus traveling hundreds of miles? I wouldn't call that a non-story. I would say it's reckless whoever's doing it. But it's particularly galling when it was the Prime Minister's advisor. Now, I mentioned to say a word about the journalists who were doorstepping him. They're hypocrites as well, and they are also in the wrong. You know, they're not observing social distance, and I know he said that when he was confronted by them. I don't like doorstepping, period. So those journalists descending on his doorstep, they're breaking the regulations. And their editors, you know, um, probably because the focus is coming, they'll escape scrutiny. Well, I'll just say it. They should get, you know, they should be criticised too. The point is we are all subject to these regulations and there shouldn't be exceptions. And people who are saying, oh, it's only because it's the lefty media out to get Dominic Cummings. No. This is, I've seen pretty consistent criticism from most quarters on this. And I think Johnson um, is really wrong to, to not understand how this comes across. At best, it is very bad PR. And I think Labour's right to push it. Now, some people would say, oh, but Starmer's just being political. Well, honestly, I think if a senior Labour person uh, done something similar, I think Starmer would accept the resignation. So far, the indication is Starmer has been quite consistent. I haven't seen any sort of um, situation where um, Starmer is kind of covering up Labour uh, problems, at least not in his time as leader. So I don't accept this. Unless people could produce evidence of that, I, I just don't think that's something that has, has been happening. Um, I don't care if someone is Labour or Tory or uh, they're a senior politician or they're a senior medical person. They are expected to set examples, whatever way you gloss it over. And you don't get much higher than the Prime Minister's personal and very influential confidant. One could argue the only person higher would be the Prime Minister himself. So I think if Johnson doesn't recognise the public anger here, I think Johnson should be saying, look, just be humble, just apologise, admit that you've made a bad error of judgement. Cummings isn't doing that because the man's profoundly arrogant. And I don't like the doorstepping tactic. Like I say, those journalists are also breaking the regulations. I don't like it as a tactic. However, Cummings comes across as arrogant, and I just don't know how people could defend it. And it's not a trivial matter when you consider this wasn't just a man travelling with his child. This was a man with virus symptoms travelling hundreds of miles, bringing it from one region to another, potentially. So whatever way you gloss it over, it's reckless, and at best, at best, it's bad PR. And I just think that when people are getting fined for more trivial things, you know, when people are getting fined for sunbathing, they shouldn't be doing it. But I wouldn't say that's as serious as someone with COVID symptoms traveling hundreds of miles. 
So those who are defending Cummings who just need to um, get out of their little partisan bubble and see the problem here. Okay, I'm not biased because I wouldn't be, I'd be say I, I had the exact same reaction when Dr. Calder would done this. And she was an advisor to the SNP, to Nicola Sturgeon. So I don't care what party colour someone has, but I do think the implications are stronger for um, Cummings because of the position that he has. He's not just a backbench MP. He, and the fact that he's on elected actually um, just demonstrative of the power that he has. The fact that Johnson's going out of his way to defend him, which actually looks bad on the Prime Minister. It makes Johnson look out of touch. When Johnson was going through his ordeal, you know, there was genuine public sympathy. But I think he is really um, misjudging the mood of the public if he defends Cummings dog doggedly. It seemed to be the trajectory of this. Um, I, I mean, it's whatever way you got it over it's reckless. And I'll leave it there. But uh, if I get this slot on LBC, I probably won't because it's busy at this time. But if I do... I'll pretty much raise these points. So tune in. It's an AMPN show on LBC. I may or may not get a slot. Thanks for watching.